from Berlin, Germany, it's the Q covering DataWorks Summit Europe 2018. Brought to you by Hortonworks. Well, hello, and welcome to the Cube. Uh, I'm James Kabilis. I'm uh, the lead analyst for the Wikibon team within SiliconANGLE Media. I'm your host today uh, here at DataWorks Summit in 2018 in Berlin, Germany. Um, we have um, one of Hortonworks' uh, customers in South America with us. This is Fernando Lopez mm. of Quanam. They're based, he's based in Montevideo, Uruguay. Mm. Um, and he uh, has won uh, here at the, at the conference, uh, he and his company have won an award, a data science award. So what I'd like to do is ask Fernando, Fernando Lopez, mm. for, to introduce himself, to give us his uh, job description, to describe the uh, project for which you won the award, and take it from there. Fernando. Hello, and thanks you, uh, for the chance. Great to have you. Um, I work for Guanam, as you already explained. Uh, we are about 400 people uh, in, in the whole company, and we are spread across Latin America. I come from the kind of headquarters, mm -hmm. which is in, located in Montevideo, Uruguay. Uh, and there we have a business analytics uh, uh, business unit. Uh, within that, we are about 70 people and we have a big data and artificial in intelligence and cognitive computing group, which I lead. Hmm. And yes, we, we also implement uh, Hortonworks. We are actually at the partners, partnering with uh, when Hortonworks. When you say you lead the group, are you a data scientist yourself or do you manage a group of data scientists or a bit of both? Well, a bit of both. Okay. S you know, you have to do uh, different stuff in this life. <laughs> uh, so yes, uh, I lead uh, the implementation groups. Sometimes the project is more big data, sometimes it's more data science, mm -hmm. different flavors. But uh, within this group, we, we try to, to cover all different aspects that are uh, related in some sense mm -hmm. with uh, big data. It could be artificial intelligence, it could be cognitive computing, you mm -hmm. know. Yes. So describe how you're using Hortonworks and, and, and describe the project for which you won, I assume it's a one project, for which you won the award uh, here at this conference. All right, yes, we are running uh, several projects, but this one, uh, the, the one about the, the price, is uh, one that I like you, I, I like uh, so much because uh, I'm actually a bioinformatics uh, student, so I have a, a special interest in, in this one. Uh, okay. It's, uh, it's good to clarify that this was uh, a joint effort between Quanam and Gene Lives. Uh, a Gen Gene, Gene Labs. Gene Lives. Gene Lives. Yes. It's a um, genetics and bioinformatics uh, company. Right. That they specialize. Is that a Montevideo based company? Yes. Uh, in a line, they are a startup that uh, was born from the Institute Pasteur, but in Montevideo. And they have. Uh, a lot of people who are specialists in bioinformatics, uh, genetics, uh, with a long career in this in, in the subject, mm -hmm. and we come from the other side, from uh, big data. Uh -huh. uh, I was kind of in the middle because of my interests with uh, bioinformatics. Mm -hmm. So, something like uh, one uh, year and a half ago, we we met both companies. Mm -hmm. Actually. There is a research uh, and innovation center, uh, ICT4V, you can visit ICT4V.org, which is a non-profit organization mm -hmm. uh, after an agreement between Uruguay and France, both oh. governments, Okay. that uh, makes possible uh, different uh, private or, or public organizations to collaborate. We have brainstorming sessions and so on. And from one of that uh, brainstorming sessions, uh, this project uh, was born. So uh, after that, we started to discuss ideas of how to bring tools to the medical geneticist in order to streamline his work, in order to put uh, on the top of his uh, desktop different tools that could make his work uh, easier and more productive. Looking for uh, genetic diseases, or what are they, what are they looking for in, in the data Correct. specifically? Correct. Uh, okay. I'm not a geneticist, okay. but I try to explain myself as good as I can. Okay, that's uh, good. If I, am, job. if I am the doctor, uh, then I will spend a lot of hours researching literature, mm -hmm. uh, bear in mind that uh, we have nearly 300 papers each day mm -hmm. coming up in PubMed, 
uh, that could be related with genetics. That's a lot. These so, are papers in Spanish that are published in South America? No, just talking about uh, PubMed, or Portuguese or PubMed from the NIH is uh, papers published in English. Okay. PubMed or Medline. Different or languages, different countries, different sources. Yeah, but most, most, of, most of it is, or, or everything in, in PubMed is in English. Th there is another PubMed in, in Europe and we have Cielo in Latin America also. But yeah. just, just to give you an idea, there's only from that source, uh, 300 papers each day that could be related to genetics. So, only speaking about literature, there's uh, a huge amount of information. Uh, if I am the doctor, it's difficult to process that. Okay, so that's part of the issue. But on, on the core of the solution, what we want to give is, uh, starting from the, from the sequenced uh, genome of one patient, mm -hmm. what can we uh, assert, what, what can we say about the, dif the different variations? It is believed that uh, uh, we have around, each one of us has about uh, four million mutations. Mm -hmm. Mutation uh, doesn't mean disease. Uh, mutation actually leads to variation. Mm -hmm. And variation is not necessarily something negative. We can, we can have different uh, color of the, of the eyes. Um, we can have uh, more or less hair. Um, or this could uh, represent some disease, something that we need to pay attention as doctors, okay? Mm -hmm. So this part of, of the solution tries to implement heuristics on what's coming from the sequencing process. Mm -hmm. And these heuri heuristics, in short, they tell you uh, which is the score of each uh, uh, variant, uh -huh. of the variation, of being uh, more or less pathogenic. So if I am the doctor, part of the work is, is done there. Mm -hmm. Then I have to decide, okay, my, dia my diagnosis is there is this, this disease or not. This can be used in two senses. It can be used uh, to, as prevention in order to predict, a hey, this could happen, you have this genetic risk, mm -hmm. or this could be used in order to explain some disease and find a treatment. So, that's the more bio bioinformatics part. Yes. On the other hand, we have the literature. What do we do with the literature is, we ingest these uh, 300 daily papers. Yes. Well, abstracts, uh, not, not papers. Actually, we have about uh, three million abstracts. You ingest text and graphics, all of it? No, only, only the abstract, which is oh, about a few hundred words. So just text? Yes. Okay. But from there, we try to identify relevant identities, proteins, uh, diseases, uh, hmm. phenotypes, things like that. And then we try, we try to infer valid relationships. This phenotype or uh, this disease can be caused because of this protein or because, uh, because of the expression of that gene, which is another uh, entity. Right. So this uh, builds, up, builds up kind of um, ontology. Uh, we, we call it the mini ontology because it's specific to, to this domain. Mm -hmm. So we have a kind of mini semantic network with millions of, of nodes mm. and edges, which is quite easy to interrogate. Mm -hmm. But the point is there you have more than just text. You have some, something that is already enriched. Mm -hmm. You have a, a series of uh, nodes, uh, nodes and arrows and you can query that in terms of uh, reasoning. Mm -hmm. What leads to what, you know? So, so the analytical tools you're using, they come from, the, well, Hortonworks doesn't make those tools. Are they yes. coming from a, another partner in South America or another partner of Hortonworks's, like an IBM, or where, where does that come uh, from? Th that's a nice question. Uh, actually, uh, we have an architecture. The, the core of the architecture is Hortonworks because we have uh, scalability topics. Yeah, we H have- HDP. Uh, Yes, uh, HDFS, uh, Hive on Test, uh, yes. Spark. We have a number of uh, items that n need to be easily ultra escalated mm -hmm. because when we talk about genome, it's easy to think about one terabyte per patient mm. of work. Mm. So that, that's one thing regarding storage and compute. On the other hand, uh, we use a graph uh, database. We use a Neo4j for that. Okay, Neo4j for graphs. You yes. have Neo4j, you have Hortonworks. Yes, and we also use, in order to process uh, natural uh, 
to do the natural language uh, uh, processing, we use NIME, which okay. is based here in, in Berlin, actually. Mm -hmm. So uh, we do uh, part of the machine learning with NIME, then we have uh, Neo4j for, for, for the graph, for building this uh, semantic network, mm. and we, for the whole processing, we have um, Hortonworks. Uh, for for uh, running this uh, analysis and heuristics and scoring the variance, mm. we also use uh, Solar for enterprise search on top of the documents that mm. come from the uh, or, or the conclusions of the documents that come from the ontology. Wow, that's a very complex and intricate uh, deployment. So um, great. So um, in terms of the takeaways from this event, we only have just a little bit more time. Mm. Um, what of all the uh, discussions and the breakouts and the keynote did you find most interesting so far about this show? Um, yep. Data stewardship was a theme of Scott Now's with that new solution. Uh, do, you know, in terms of what you're describing as an operational application, is that have you built out something that can be deployed, is being deployed by your customers on an ongoing basis? It wasn't a one-time project, right? This is an ongoing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, pr uh, application they can use internally. Mm. Is there a need in in Uruguay or among your customers to uh, to provide uh, privacy protections on sure. this data? Will you be using these solutions like uh, the Data Steward Studio to enable a degree of privacy protection on data equivalent to what say GDPR requires in Europe? Is that is that something? Yes. Actually, uh, we are running other projects in Uruguay. We are helping the, um, with other companies, we are helping the, the national telecommunications uh, company. Right. So th there, is, there are uh, uh, security and privacy topics over there. And we are also uh, starting these days a, a new project, again with ICT4V and other friend companies. We mm -hmm. are in charge of the big data part mm -hmm. for, the, um, for an education uh, program which is based on the uh, one laptop per child uh, initiative yeah. from the times of uh, Nicholas Negroponte. Mm -hmm. Well, that initiative has already 10 years. Oh yeah, from MIT, yes. Yes, from MIT, right. Uh, that initiative uh, has already 10 years old uh, mm -hmm. in, in Uruguay, and now it has evolved also to retired people. So it's a kind of going towards the digital society. Excellent, I have to wrap it up. Um, but Fernando, that's great, you have a lot of follow-on work. Mm. Um, this is great, so clearly a lot of very advanced research is being done all over the world. Mm. I had uh, the previous guests from South Africa, I, you from Uruguay, so mm. really uh, south of the equator, there's yeah. far more activity in big, big data that, than we here in the Northern Hemisphere, Europe and mm. North America realize, so I, I'm, I'm very impressed and I look forward to hearing more from Quanam and, mm. and uh, through your partner or uh, through your you know, provider. Okay. Uh, Horton Works. Well, thank you very thank much. Thank you, and thanks for it's the chance. It's been great to have you here on theCUBE. I'm you, James Kabilis. We're here at uh, Data, Data Works Summit in Berlin, and we'll be talking to another guest fairly soon.